Greetings. This is Michael Earlywine, and I'm going to talk here about the problem with hallucinogens. Appearances are not just out there for us to discover and see the outside world. We also project appearances, and thus uh, we're both the seer and also what is seen. And we can get lost in watching our own projections and taking them for real um, what is reality. It seems that often we are too easily entranced by our own projections to see much else. And we wander in a world of illusions that are little more than our own inner fears and projections projected on the outside world where we can then fixate on them, which we do. Taking as real our own inner hopes and fears as we manage to project them on the outside world and not realize it, we're much like the proverbial deer in the headlights, transfixed by visualizing our own fears personified. I was that, uh, I was that way, trapped in duality until I was 23 years old in 1964. This is when I realized this, and it was only because I had the temerity to take that, the new drug LSD acid, which then demonstrated to me in no uncertain terms that much of what I was seeing, much of what I was afraid of in the outside world were my own fears and mindset as projected by me. Anyway, that night in Berkeley, California changed my life forever. At the time, very little was known about LSD other than the rumor that it could permanently alter your mind. And by that, I assumed it did something to alter our brains chemically. But that was not it. What LSD did do is alter and permanently the way I looked at life, my attitude. And, it, and in my case, it was for the better because I understood all at once in one night that I had been sticking my own finger in my eye all my life, so to speak. I had been projecting my inner fears on the wide screen of life since I was a child, and then being terrified by what I saw, taking what I saw, what I projected, for reality, the way the world actually was or is. And I thought that what surrounded me, all the appearances, was real. And most important, on that single night, I realized that I could do something about this all by myself. Never thought I had the finger on the scale, right? I never thought I had anything to say in the matter. Uh, and after that night, I did. And only it took decades to sort it out, which is kind of part of what I'm going to, I want to talk about, the problems with hallucinogens, but also their virtue. So anyway, catching myself out that night, so to speak, meant becoming aware that the world that I saw out there was being projected from right in here, right in my own mind, never occurred to me. And that night I experienced the two, the inner and the outer, me in here and the world out there as one and the same. I didn't just think or conceptualize it, not just a thought. I lived it in real time, in real experience. And until that night, I had been living in my own dream cocoon all my life. But 
the first step, as I understand it, is to become aware that we are living in our own projection, literally. So why not just take some LSD and open Pandora's box and see what happens? There actually are reasons to be cautious, in my opinion, from just taking acid. The problem with just going out and taking acid today or any other day is that the LSD experience can be, and often is, totally imprinting. It leaves an indelible impression in us, one that's really hard to ignore. It's like a die-cut stamp. It imprints our minds so vividly that the imprint becomes the reference point as to who we are. When we think back to experiences that deeply wrought us, changed us, I end up with that acid experience. Certainly it changed my life. It was like a snapshot of taking acid of our own mind in time, kind of a one-off that is forever imprinted and something we have to work through and balance out. And that's, that's a lot of the point of why I'm reciting this. And it's the balancing out that can be difficult because that takes time and lots of it. In my case, decades. That means decades to balance out what I saw in a single night when the mind was open to me and I could see what I was actually doing. Um, and even that didn't do it, even all those decades. It took, in addition, a methodical and balanced Dharma practice, learning to meditate in different ways, to learning to use the mind, and also kind of a curriculum to clear away the cobwebs from my LSD trips. I only had two significant trips, so I didn't take it a lot, uh, in order to answer all the questions that I could not figure out. Of course, as people like to say, we can set up our LSD trip to be pleasant. Certainly that was true on my first acid trip, at least as to my intent. Or Actually, it was more like the people around me wanted to have a programmed trip, which uh, I resisted and finally couldn't control at all. I was taken by my then girlfriend to a very nice house. There were candles were lit and there was soft music on the stereo. And a few people sat around to keep me company and kind of watch over me. I even made my girlfriend promise that no matter what I said, she would not leave me. She promised. And that sounded safe doesn't it? I mean, that was wrong. It only took a few minutes on acid for me to decide that this safe and sound setup was not for me, not remotely and not appropriate with what I was out the door. And I was just, I left that place, went out the door and began walking the Berkeley campus at night. My friend came with me. Next, I told my girlfriend that, hey, I'm fine, and that she should just go home without a word. Although she promised not to leave me no matter what, she just left, and there I was, totally alone. And I was not all right. Gosh, I was on acid. She was just a girlfriend, not someone I loved. Before you could think, my simple command to her to leave, and she was just gone. And there I was alone struggling with my, by then, terror-stricken mind, because I was catching all this. I was seeing a lot of what I'm talking about here. Now, that has to be kind of funny. Yet it made sense for acid. It made sense at the time for acid. It was really all about me. It was just for me, something that I had to do myself, because I had to get down to the nitty-gritty uh, and to get to know myself in a way that I never have. Now, this story is not meant to scare you, but it is, it is intended to inform you that it's very hard to plan an acid trip if the whole point of it is to come to terms with yourself and what has always worried you. Another pleasant experience is not what you need, just, you know, like smoking pot or 
just having fun. And for me, at least the whole point of taking acid was to achieve a come-to-Jesus moment. I was suffocating from being brought up in the 1950s. Anyway, like some kind of homing pigeon, I went right for my own jugular, so to speak. I had deep questions on my mind, and I needed answers. To do that, I had to get beyond something like a planned event, and, you know, burning can candles, playing music, or watching a movie. I was out for blood. I needed to feel the quick in myself, so to speak. I can only think of the final line of the poem, Carrion Comfort, by my favorite poet, Gerard Manley Hopkins, which is, Of now done darkness, I wretchedly wrestling with my God, my God. And so, I treat illicit Elicogenic drugs like LSD with the greatest respect. To me, as sacred as can be, they are, because you're touching into what you otherwise are unable and never have touched into. You've ignored, turned away, and yet my whole being, at some level, yearned for this. Certainly, I never saw it coming or imagine the world could fracture like this and become one. And so, ultimately, there's no way to protect yourself from yourself, no matter how many people and what kind of elaborate setup you arrange for an acid trip. We just can't do it. LSD will follow the course of our own mind's need to know and go directly right at the heart of the matter. At least that's what I call a good trip, getting something actually done getting to know myself. Oh, of course, have a nice trip and arrange it as best you can, but keep in mind you'll be stepping beyond the confines of your known self, not to mention society's demeanor, and I mean it happens in a flash. So if, if you really are looking for answers, they do exist, but just perhaps not as we imagine, or else we would have already imagined it. If we knew, we would already know, and so it would be clear that we don't, don't know and cannot answer the questions, cannot know the answers if our questions are real. And so the great philosopher, philosopher Hegel said it so well. He says, we go behind the curtain of the self to see what's there, but mainly for there to be something to be seen. LSD is not conceptual, not something conceptual. It's experiential. Above all, it's an experience. LSD is a full immersion beyond the duality, subject and object, in which we have been raised. And above all, it's a total immersive experience because there's no subject and no object on acid, just complete dunking, complete immersion and initiation. As my first Dharma teacher used to say, Michael, we're all initiates, but to what degree? And he would speak the word initiate and spell it out as in, it, I, ate. 